Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Chris and today we're going to give you a glimpse inside on how to make a custom picture frame. It's joined together with some techniques you may not have seen, so stick around and let's see how we get it done. Woo! Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be making a frame for this picture I bought my wife last year for her birthday. I'm going to link down below a site where I got this. This is an artist named Michelle McDowell Smith. Check her work out. She does a bunch of mixed media prints. It's really cool stuff. I picked up this piece of glass from my local big box store and you can see I put a straight edge down and I'm making one cut to bring it to size. So I just want to say before you actually work with cutting glass, it's best to probably put on a pair of gloves. I probably should have had these on since the beginning of when I was working with this thing, but I didn't. As a precaution, wear these things. After scoring your line with a glass cutting wheel, simply take your fingers on either side and snap it just like that. It comes right off and very clean. Well, that was easy. Here I'm taking some half inch Baltic birch plywood and I'm making four strips at four inches and four strips at three and a half inches. All right, well, I have plywood here in my shop that I'm using for this frame, but honestly, this could be made from one by fours and one by threes that you could purchase at a local big box store. And the only cuts you would have to make are the cross cuts for the size of the picture you're trying to frame. All right, you don't need a table saw. You don't need to rip any boards. I'm just using this as an example for something that you can just go buy at the big box store. Anyway, moving on. Now essentially I'm going to build this frame around this piece of glass, but to do that, instead of handling the glass over and over again, I've cut this cardboard template. So as you watch me build this, I'm just going to explain how this system works. The three and a half inch piece is the back of the frame. The four inch piece is the front or the face of the frame. And what I'm doing here is I'm cutting these pieces in reference to how big that template is that we measured for the glass. Now, I'm making essentially a rabbit out of layering a piece on top of another piece that's a half inch difference. So in theory, this is going to be where the picture rests. As you see here, the top and bottom are made and the cardboard template is resting in that rabbit. I then take a, another four inch piece and make a cut along the adjoining side, giving me the height of the frame as well. Again, each piece is layered and they're layered in such to where at each of the corners, it forms a half lap joint. As I start to put this together with some glue and screws, I make sure that each corner is square. These screws are three and a half inch screws and they are not gonna be seen, they're gonna be on the back of the frame. It helps to clamp the work piece down to your work surface, making sure that you're square as well by taking a measurement at the diagonals. And at this point, the thing is made except for the last two vertical pieces that are gonna go on just like this. Again, clamps, glue and screws, and you're good to go. And it looks like we have a tight fit. Check that out. So here's a quick overview. You can see the three and a half inch pieces are layered and such to give you a rabbit where the picture then rests. As you can see also, the half lap joints at each 90 degree angle gives you a super strong and a super unique frame that's constructed with very minimal tools and no miters. That's the key. Miters can be an absolute pain, right? Right. But when I put the glass back on, Check that out. I guess I didn't cut the glass exactly 100% square, so I'm taking an angle grinder and a couple of different sanding blocks and a couple of little chisels here and I'm just kind of whittling away some wood, getting this glass to fit just right. At this point, the frame looks pretty good. I'm gonna sand it to 220 front and back and all the sides. Now it's time to use a Roman OG bit to put a nice profile along the edge of this frame. What I'm doing here is I'm going over the first pass with the bit about halfway down in the router. The second pass now, as you can see here, the bit is all the way down, putting a series of coves and roundovers in the piece. A quick little tip, if you don't have a foam sanding block, just go inside and get a household sponge, wrap some sandpaper around it, and you'll be good to go. With everything nice and sanded, it's time to apply some stain. This is a Minwax stain called Jacobean, or Jacobean if you will, I'm not really sure. But either way, it's nice and dark and it does a pretty good job. I'm gonna apply some tongue oil as the finish for this thing. It's gonna bring out the dark stain as well. It's also gonna bring out some of that wood grain in the Baltic Birch plywood. And honestly, looking pretty good in my opinion. 
So my next step is to take a piece of quarter inch plywood and cut a back for the frame that's gonna hold the glass and the picture all together. I go ahead and get this glass cleaned up with some acetone, getting some of the handprints and stickiness off of it. Lay the picture in there, put the backer on, and I'm gonna attach this with just some simple panhead nails. As I install the last nail in the back, I flip it over and I realize we have a little happy accident here. The birch trees in the picture, they match the Baltic birch plywood that the frame was made from. As I attach the picture framing wire on the back of the picture with some panhead screws, I realize that for a little added security, I'm gonna install one more screw right through the wire as well. The picture is gonna be displayed right outside our master bedroom in a hallway. Hard to get some angles and some good shots, so I took it outside in the sunlight to give you a better look at what it looks like. Thank you so much for watching this week. We really appreciate the viewership. Also, we kind of have a theme going on here. My daughter wearing a fox shirt. Here you go. There's your fox, little baby. Also, I want to thank the artist who made that mixed media painting or picture, if you will. I'm going to link her website down below. Also, we need to thank our Patreon supporters. You know, every quarter for my top Patreon supporters, I make something in the shop and I mail it to them. I do a drawing and they can win it. Whether it's something like this, maybe some pins that I've been turning on the lathe, you name it. It could be one of the wine displays. It could be anything. But it's definitely going to be something that's going to be heartfelt and meaningful, at least in my opinion. And I want to thank Quinn. Quinn is my first top-level Patreon supporter. I really appreciate the viewership and the support, buddy. Your support goes a long way in helping this channel. Also, I want to thank Robbie and Steve, and then another Steve from Moonshine Metalworks. Those four gentlemen, thank you so much for your support. I adore you. I really do. Also, we're always going to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing. And then over there is going to be a few more videos to watch too. Mwah! My name is Chris. This has been A Glimpse Inside. And we'll see you later. Say bye. <laughs> All right, you ready? <laughs> you ready? You ready? You ready?